We will present our Y stent assisted coil embolization of a uh, middle cerebral artery aneurysm. Uh, this technique uh, w we first described in uh, 2005 in neurosurgery, and um, since then, this has uh, been more widely used for the treatment of middle cerebral artery aneurysms. Uh, the, uh, this technique um, was ideal for this patient. Uh, it was a 53 year old woman with polycystic kidney disease and a multi-lobed aneurysm measuring five millimeters. Um, the patient also had a family history of subarachnoid hemorrhage, uh, and um, she clearly uh, felt uh, quite concerned about uh, having this aneurysm, and uh, the uh, options of open surgery, of course, were discussed with her, but uh, her preference was to uh, use an endovascular treatment. The um, anatomy of this uh, bifurcation has to be clearly defined, and that the 3D uh, Angiography is very important uh, on this um, assessment. Because of the complexity of this anatomy, we decided to use a ProSelect Plus and a synchro wire uh, to catheterize. And perhaps this is one of the most important tips of this uh, technique is always consider to catheterize first the most challenging vessel of the bifurcation. In this case, we felt to be the superior branch of the middle cerebral artery bifurcation. We also used a six French um, neuron guide catheter over select to catheterize the internal core artery. The patient was fully heparinized with an ACT of 250, as well as uh, uh, the PRU and AR ARU levels were um, uh, therapeutic. We um, uh, gently using the 3D roadmap technique uh, allows us to have on the left side of our monitor a fluoroscopic view uh, and a better appreciation of the device performance and through the anatomy and on the right side you can see that uh, you can choose the angle of the anatomy without having to do constant number roadmaps as you're trying to find this uh, very challenging anatomy and, and many times you may have to change the position of your tube as you move uh, the um, into this anatomy so having the 3D roadmap gives you a lot of flexibility. This is an important aspect here. We have to do a roadmap to look at the distal anatomy. As we position the 14 wire, we want to get a significant purchase into the distal vessel, but be very careful about not perforating the small vessels as the anatomy gets more distal. Uh, but also you want to position the wire, the transition portion between soft and more sturdy segment of the wire right at the bifurcation. So you can see how the microcatheter goes through the uh, aneurysm area without bucking into the aneurysm and uh, this uh, position is also very crucial to have a distal placement of the microcatheter so that when you navigate your stent into this location you will not have any uh, chance of losing your catheter position. So in this case um, we chose the shortest uh, enterprise stent available. Um, one could use uh, an enterprise without the distal tip. In this case, we have one with a um, uh, distal tip. Uh, the more distal we uh, go into the anatomy, uh, the use of stents uh, or delivery systems that have no distal wire uh, will be more beneficial. In this case, we felt comfortable we had enough of a landing area for a wire. And you can see here that uh, uh, the 3D roadmap is deformed, uh, but it, I still have a good sense and I prefer to have on the left side the fluoroscopic view to see exactly where the device is uh, being deployed. Uh, with this fluoroscopy, uh, I, uh, was, I had the comfort that uh, even though I had distortion in the 3D, the landing area for the neck of the inners was uh, uh, there was significant mismatch between the, the size of the stent and uh, the neck of the inners that uh, I felt comfortable using bone landmarks as well as uh, my 3D roadmap uh, to uh, deploy the first uh, stent. Now, once you deploy the stent, uh, you see that we were careful to have a very uh, good purchase of the middle cerebral artery M2 segment and very little on the M1 segment. That was done to avoid uh, placing multiple devices for a long segment uh, of overlapping into the M1. Once we deploy the first, the microcatheter remains in position and you use the synchro 14 wire now to catheterize the second branch of the uh, uh, bifurcation. And in this case, is, this is an extremely important part. It's just, uh, it has to be done without moving the first device. So once we get um, 
the wire across the uh, cells of the first stent into the M2 segment uh, to be uh, stented, we want to obtain in the same way a distal position of the wire so that uh, that gives uh, a better way to direct the microcatheter through that cell. And this is a very important part as you can see here. One has to magnify and see very well that catheter passing through the cell. You see that there's going to be a little bump as it goes through that cell, but I'm adjusting the wire in the microcatheter position to find the, the soft spot to go right through that uh, cell of the stent and this is to be done without moving the first stent. You can see, you saw just there we were able to find a little space and then you pass the microcatheter through that cell without moving the first stent. Now as we deploy the second device we are careful to obtain again good distal purchase but then very little into the M1 so that you don't have a lot of overlapping devices into the M1 segment, but you have a very comfortable uh, protection of the neck of the aneurysm. And the Y, in this case, uh, we chose the same size of device um, as the first one, so you have two closed cell design uh, stands uh, measuring uh, 14 millimeter each so that you have uh, the shortest segment of metal possible into the uh, uh, M2 and M1 uh, bifurcation. And once you have this stand deployed, sometimes uh, the wire can be back caught. You can see right there that you can have a little bit of resistance to pull the wire back of the delivery system of the stand. This has to be done very careful, so you may have to push forward and then back so that you're able to uh, release the wire from the two stands. But the last thing you want to do here is to move the Y stand construct because it gets caught into your uh, the bumpers of the, your delivery system. We always analyze the 3D again after the placement of the construct. It's likely that you may need another view to place the coils into this. And I think what's been very helpful to us is to obtain now a new acquisition um, uh, using the uh, Siemens the DynaCT VOI technique, which is a collimation from top to bottom and side to side to decrease the dose radiation that uh, we do in this next spin. But uh, this type of acquisition will allow us then to form a, um, a model of the stents that were deployed. So you're not doing a virtual stent, you're actually using the real uh, Y stent construct to then overlay in your anatomy as you advance uh, a microcatheter through the Y stent to get access to the aneurysm. One can argue that it would be okay also to place the uh, microcatheter in parallel, but I think it's quite uh, busy when you have to m construct a Y and have a microcatheter into the aneurysm position, especially on the small aneurysms like this one. So I think that this overlay technique allows you to have a nice um, idea of uh, where the transition between the parent vessel uh, that you have created with the Y construct and the aneurysm uh, is. And in this case, we have to place very little wire into the aneurysm because this is a multi lobed aneurysm. The daughter sex are uh, extremely high risk for possible rupture, so one has to be um, able to uh, fade in and out the overlay. As you can see on the right side, we're able then to visualize the device as well as uh, uh, visualize the boundaries of this uh, anatomy that is. Uh, uh, quite complex. But the, the moment that we're comfortable that the microcatheter is in position, we're able then to uh, confirm that in multiple views and position the um, uh, our tube into the best angle possible to start the coiling procedure. And um, the use of a single plane and uh, these techniques of uh, overlaying as well as uh, the uh, uh, 3D roadmap is allowing us to use much less uh, contrast as well as radiation during this procedure. In a patient with a polycystic kidney disease, this, this is quite important. Um, so in this case, uh, we're placing the first coil. I, in general, tend to go with very soft. This is an ultra soft uh, 360 coil and uh, it's uh, undersized, and uh, I think that um, the 
idea of undersizing is to we have significant protection at the neck of the aneurysm. I want this to be as easy as possible to place these coils without a lot of uh, pushback of having to have the microcatheter go in and out of the parent vessel. So I think that uh, it's very important now that once you've got access to the aneurysm that your microcatheter stays there and you're able then to place all the coils inside of the aneurysm without uh, having to manipulate the catheter too many times. Um, unfortunately in this case my first coil was not able to um, completely uh, cover all the neck of the aneurysm uh, or uh, rather uh, was not able to cover all the lobes of the aneurysm so I had to uh, uh, reposition the tip of the microcatheter uh, to uh, go into the inferior portion of uh, this aneurysm and then we place uh, two more uh, target coils on that location and this was um, was done uh, in the the best way possible I can think of is to use softer coils and uh, the debate is if you have two stents across the neck of the aneurysm in a Y configuration, especially closed cell uh, stents, if, they, if it's needed to have a complete occlusion of the aneurysm, our feeling is that uh, we'd like to do the best coiling we can do and still have the uh, stance across. So you have the immediate uh, sealing or closure of the aneurysm as well as the Y stent adding the long-term durability of this uh, treatment. So it's a combination of having an initial closure of the aneurysm as well as uh, a uh, reconstruction of the parent vessels that will be uh, provided as the durability of this treatment. Uh, once we were satisfied with uh, the um, closure of the um, aneurysm, we proceed to uh, then uh, uh, basically uh, check uh, the uh, under, this is a, a uh, very challenging portion of the procedure, like when is enough to coil this, but we tend to do this under a uh, blank roadmap as you can see here, and you analyze that uh, every one of the segments of the aneurysm is uh, uh, at least uh, being fueled by the coil, and when this is the final angiographic view, uh, confirming the impression that we had that we had a good uh, coil mass and the reconstruction of the parent vessels. And here you can see uh, the arrows point the two stents as well as the coil mass. This patient did very well through the procedure. She had no change in her neurological exam. She was discharged the next day um, and had uh, a uh, successful recovery from this. We feel that uh, this uh, construct has made a tremendous difference in our practice, and uh, I recommend uh, the um, use of uh, Y stenting whenever we find that uh, the reconstruction of bifurcation is challenging. And uh, this is uh, just the beginning of uh, a uh, area that uh, has tremendous potential to grow as new devices become available. I hope this is helpful on um, this topic, and um, thank you.